Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process. If you want to realize your potential, one must learn how not to get stopped by others. Every individual wants to realize his own potential. That is the what our scripture says, you have to realize your potential and your infinite potential. And uh, it is a very great thought, we should keep in mind and then start this lecture. Let us recapitulate what we learned in the last lecture. If you recall that we started with the chronological, some portion I uh, could not cover in the last to last lecture about particularly from uh, something around 1200 AD to 1800 uh, CE because I will be using in place of ADC that is common era. And later on I went to the Vedic eras and we looked at you know various parts of the Vedas, Upabedas and also lot of uh, other scriptures. And we looked at uh, one very important thing, Silpa Sahita, which is having various ways of uh, whole gamut of the engineering, you know things what we are having. <coughs> Today what we will be looking at is basically that how our ancestors were carrying out not only the science and other knowledge, they are harnessing the other knowledge. What are the ways, what are the basic principles they, are, they were using? Can anybody think of? Because if you look at ours is a very great living civilization I call, most of the ancient civilization of other parts of the world is almost dead, but ours is still living, it is about to die because of cultural innovation at this moment. We must see that uh, we are alive and we are having a culture of scientific exploration which is as old as our Indian civilization. It is not that science was not there, rather science was there, it is intermingled with the spirituality. We never had a quarrel between the religious leaders and the scientists, like uh, unlike in western part of the world. We are having all together, that is the samarasata, that means you know some balance they were having. And the method of harnessing the scientific knowledge or any other form of knowledge has its deep roots. It's very, and if you look at, you will find that the modern way of doing science is similar if not same. So, you will be knowing most of them, but uh, I will be talking about that in, uh, if you look at this is total, the ways of doing is basically Pratyaksh, Anuman, Agama, Arthapati and Praman. I think this terminology some of you might be aware. Pratyaksh means what? Uh, Pratyaksh means is basically perceptions. Right? When how you will perceive? It can be external, it can be internal. Right? What do you mean by external perceptions? How you will perceive a thing? What are the basic tools you are endowed as a human being to do that? What are those things? Uh, through what we call our senses, like uh, senses. Yeah. We call in Hindi or in Sanskrit indriyas. Indri. Indri. You know, yeah. there is a total ten indriyas. Uh, karmendriyas and ganendriyas, right. Karmendri means hand, you know leg and then anus and then you know like a genital, these are all karmendriyas. That um, this thing like your eyes, ears, uh, skins, right and uh, nose, these are all sense organs. So, by that you will basically get the perception by these five senses for the worldly objects. If I want to see, I want to observe in modern science, you want to do, 
will have to do that with that help. Of course, nowadays you can have technology to aid your senses, that is all. But senses is the ultimate thing for a human being to perceive, to get the ideas, right. But there is also internal perception. Internal perception, you know, you can think of mind. In Indian sense, mind is a very vast thing. I do not want to get into, right. <laughs> like you might be knowing, Ankara, Buddhi, Chita, right, and uh, Manas, these are all part. It is a very whole kind of concept. Mind is not only mind, okay. <laughs> that is a western way of looking at, but ours is a very uh, profound thought process or the way of understanding. So, I will not get into that, but I will tell you that inner sense, these are the external sensors what we are having. Inner sense, I call it as a basically intuitive power, intuition. And the intuitive power man is endowed, not animal. And that cannot be, can be a harness if we follow our ancestor way of teaching. Unfortunately, we are not. We must do that and the modern method of teaching uh, the, you know, education is far away from getting the intuitive knowledge. I am not going to discuss that here, but however, intuitive knowledge is very important and one has to integrate it with the mother nature, then only you can get the intuitive power. And that is being, you know, has to be utilized for harnessing the science to understand, to discover, to find out. And another way of doing is Anuman, what we call inference. Inference, if you look at it is basically, uh, you want to draw some conclusions, but those conclusions which should have prior knowledge also, that we call as a inference. And uh, of course, you may have some observation, connect to the previous one, whatever you are having, then connect it, that we call inference. And in loosely one can say interpretation, we do interpret and that we do in our science, that is Anumana. And it is very important to use your mind to have inference. People do not have time to think and then whatever they will do inference, drawing, <laughs> they need mind to do that. So, in modern way, although we are using technology, but we do not have peace of mind to think and draw inference, conduct experiment, you need perseverance, you need also good uh, what you call patience to do that. Scholarship cannot be obtained in a hurry. You want to be a scholar, you will have to be patience, right, and lot of things. So, therefore, the another way of doing is agama, meaning that whichever is coming down from the previous generation, you need to learn that and also understand that. That does not mean something wrong we will have to accept, but you will have to check, verify it and then only you can say that is Agama. It is a traditional knowledge what is coming up. What happened in India like you know with this western or the modernity, we lost all our things. We should not. Even right now also we are losing our traditional knowledge at an alarming rate. We should try to look at what they are and our ancestors were having, we should take care of that and understand in a modern way, not that we will have to, you know, be in that, no. Uh, the whole, what you call world is in motion, that will be there also, it was there thousand years is in motion, right, flow, continuum. Today also, it will be there after thousand years, but we need, we will have to keep continuity. Continuity last means you are lost, <laughs> am I right or wrong? Continuity has to be maintained. So, therefore, we need to look at traditional knowledge and do that and this is the Agama is also tradition, you know, you have to look at. Do not throw that tradition because it is old, no, you are, you cannot afford to do that. So, therefore, we need to look at and those things you can use also for your way of interpreting or the, this thing. Then the Arthapati means a postulation. If you look at the word postulation and inference, it is almost similar, it is not same. So, why there is another word? Can anybody tell me? Postulate means you, you know, postulate something, you say something, like you guess that what it would be, right? Yeah. What will be the model? But then what is the difference? Can anybody tell me? Difference is that, in this case, you get this postulation from a circumstances, from the evidence present. You are not taking the help of earlier knowledge. 
It is not that something on your back of mind and then you are trying to connect and guess. No, it is very raw, new. So, therefore, that is arthapati. See, look at the word they are having. Right? Even in modern time, we do not have that clarity. I am sure most of you may not be having. Am I right? But they were having. <laughs> right? It is, I am giving you tips of iceberg, you know. There is a lot more to that. So, it is not that only you will inference, only you will speculate, only postulation. No, you will have to have proof. And we call it pramahanam. So, proof means proof can be done various ways. You can have you know like somebody has told and you are getting that experience it is a proof you can conduct experiment and proof there is a certain hypothesis is being talked about the another fellow also think that way you know like there is a various way of you can give a logic and then prove from some other places right that we do in mathematics right proof of various ways so therefore we always believe in proof so this is the beauty of the ancient science and also the technology by which you know by the method by which they were harnessing the ancient science and it is not that you know believe something superstitious no so therefore you should think that they were doing and as i told you the basic principle and you should use these principles also for harnessing modern science and whatever you do is not only science for any other knowledge as a matter of fact it should not be somebody has told and then you will believe no you will have to experience, you will have to interpret, you are a human being, you know, you are having a, you want to garner the knowledge. So, therefore, this has to be followed. So, if you look at ancient India was a land of sages, saints, seers, as well as land of scholars and scientists. As I told earlier that Bharat is Bha means knowledge, Rat means jo involve or indulge or doing harnessing the knowledge that is Bharat. Always we are having a knowledge society. Okay. The amount of knowledge what we have gathered, what we have given is enormous. Today we are not because we are following them blindly. <laughs> right? Then how can you do that? We can do only when you are having own and then you think independently and of course, you can learn from others. So, therefore, ancient India's contribution to science and technology includes lot of things. I will be giving a very short overview of that mathematics. We are very good in mathematics, although some of you will be frightened by the mathematics today. And as I told that concepts of zero is a great contribution to the world. The techniques of algebra, algorithm, square roots, cube roots and then you know like the calculus is from this place lie in the India 500 years before the Levins and Newton could think of. But unfortunately, in our school and colleges, that is not talked about it. It is very unfortunate. We should tell to our kids, to our youngsters that we, our people were doing and we must do that. We should come to their label. So, what I was telling that this is the things what is very important. For example, the uh, if I say, if I ask people the numeral systems, for example, I, I means what? One i 2 means 2 right or i 3 means uh, if i write it down right i what is i i basically 1 right 2 i call right 3 okay i v 4 so if you look at this is one num numeral system that is another right this is another numeral system what do you call this one? Roman numeral. What is this numeral system? Indo-Arabic, Indo right? But very few people will be knowing that that is Indian. From India, it is originated. When we were a kid, it was known as Arabic numerals. But now, worldwide, it has been accepted. But my young friends, they do not know. We must tell to our people, look, we are the people who have our ancestors, we are means our ancestors had developed very beautiful numeral systems, right. We should feel proud of it, not only proud of it, but do something for our country and also the world. Am I right or wrong? So, therefore, lot of things we should, uh, I mean, have to convey. 
have to do that and communicate to the our youngsters that is the reason why I am taking so much of pain of doing this ancient Indian technology uh, course. So, uh, you may not may be our Sulabh Sutra which was very long time back even like you know I have already given uh, and they were having solution of quadratic equation what you use in your uh, school times you know in the school it is being taught, but you never told it is from the Sulabh Sutra right. So, also the permutation, combination, irrational numbers as I told calculus, several other things. You will be surprised to know that we use binary numbers in computers uh, modeling, binary number is being used and it was there in our country by Pingala Chanda Sutra from something 1500 to 1000 BC before common era. Before common era you know from the Christ onwards is known as common era and before that uh, BC you call before common era. That means, you know if it will 1500 around 2000, 3000, 500 years back you know <laughs> are you getting. But that was not meant for computer application, it was meant for prosody, prosody means you know poetry, chanda like many will have to make it that way. And it was meant for spiritual right, our main base was that and you can see in Merupastar and other thing. But and if you want to look at uh, this reference, you can see this Ganita Sara Sangra by Mahaviracharya 800 C common errors. So, if you look at mathematics was considered to be the very important subject in ancient India, but today our uh, students are getting frightened by mathematics, you know they say oh it is difficult and it is you know like they feel uh, very shy about it. Why I am saying because it was used in Vedanga Jyotisa, this uh, sloka I am taking from that in around 1200 BC says Yatha Sikha Mayuranam Naganang Manayo Tat Yatha Tad Bad Vedanga Sastanam Ganitang Murdinam Stitam. What is the meaning of that? Meaning is that like the crest of the peacock, like the gem on the head of a snake. So, is the mathematics is head of all the knowledge. Mathematics is very important for propagating the knowledge. Why? Why it is so? Actually, let me tell you our ancestors were aware that mathematics is the language by which you will express the science. You will be making it compact, you will do manipulation, calculation, you know, the way the what you call uh, language helps us to develop our mind, you know, you are aware or not because our uh, language is very scientific. It helps to develop the intellectuality, the power of the mind, not the English what I am using, okay. It is the Sanskrit is the best language, any other Indian language will be good because they are scientific. Similarly, mathematics helps to develop the mind and also to communicate well, right. That is why mathematics is important and he has given, they have given, they had given the importance since you know like what you call some 3000 years back even. So, let us uh, look at uh, another sloka I am taking, chatura dikang satamasta gunam dvasasti tatha sasranam ayuta doya viska maya ashonno ruto parirana who gave this, this sloka is basically from Aryavata 1 uh, around uh, 476 C common era. And what is the meaning of that? That means, he is saying add 4 to 100, multiply by 8, then add 62 thousands, then divide it by the 20,000, result is approximately circumference circle diameter by 20,000. By saying so, what is trying to say? Do you know? Can anybody guess? It is the value of pi. Value of pi. See, how they have put this thing in a very what you call simplified way and a language or a like a poem, a stanza of a poem. That means, the literature it was very profound in expressing the thing. So, and it is one example I have given, there are several examples, I would not be really 
discussing all of them, but I will be showing later on how the people were good in communicating or what you call in a little complex way also. If you look at it, it is a complex way, it is not that easy. So, I will uh, give you another uh, very instances where cryptically people have talked about it. So, therefore, when you say that what is this, then you know you will lose the mist. Let us say this is the sloka like Gopi Bhagya Madhu Brata Sunga Sodadi Sandhiga Kalajivyata Khatva Galahala Rasangdhara. If you look at this sloka, it is basically talking about Krishna, Sri Krishna. Gopi Bhagya means you know Gopi jo hai, unka Bhagya hai, Vidata hai, Raja hai, you know like he is a controller. But is it really so? That we will look at to unravel that we will have to go to the Katapadi Sankhya. Katapadi Sankhya you some of you may be aware that earlier days what do they give? They give a letter to a number. Ka is 1, Kha is 2, Ga is 3, Gha is 4, Gya is 5, Cha, Cha, Ja, Ja, right. And Ta, Tha, Da, Dha, Na, it goes that way. And Pa, Fa, Ba, Va, Ma, Ya, Ra, La, Ba, Sha, Ya, and Kya. <coughs> so, if you look at, if I say Ga, Ga means what? 3, Pa, Pa means what? 1, and if I say Bha means, what is Bha? Can it, anybody tell me? Bha is 4. So, if you go on putting that thing, you will, after that 5, okay, you will find the value of pi which is correct up till the last digit. I, can you please count how many are there? If you are having calculator, you can check that the number is correct till the last but one digit. So, if you look at what a wonderful thing and we do not know how to decipher it, you know. <laughs> are you getting? There is a lot of things and we lost a lot of things. Something has gone, we do not know. So, therefore, you know like a lot of uh, scholars particularly from Arabian countries when they started taking our thing, they were startled. They say, why these people are doing that much you know, complicated. So, and that that also needs a label of thinking, like you love expressing it, you know. It is not that easy to think and do that. So, there is a lot of things which are, which are not connected, but disconnected because history we lost a lot of things because of invasion, because of thousand years of foreign rule, you know, you can say. And today also we are in the, that colonial mind or the, that slavery mindset, we have not come up. We hope that you people will do well and come up. So, uh, of course, the Einstein, I consider him is one of the greatest scientists so far this world has produced. And what he says, he says that we owe a lot to, in, to the Indians who taught us how to count without which no worthwhile scientific discovery could have been made. And he is confessing, but whether we have that feel, if we do not have feel that, then we cannot really progress because you should have conviction that our ancestors were good and we need to go beyond them. That is important, right? Then only we will be driving. So, with this uh, motivation, I would suggest that you please think about it and do well and see that all your potentially will come out of you and you will be useful to the, not only yourself, for the society, for the world at large. So, if you look at uh, the physics generally comes from the metaphysics in India particularly, you know. And you can all aspect like mechanics, matter, magnetism and optics, I will be not talking very detail, but however, I will give you try to glimpses of that. For example, if you look at mechanics, this is a sloka, I will not recite it, utkhepana, prakshepana, kunchana, prasharana, Gamanani, Pancha Karmani. Karmani means basically is a motion, like five kinds of motion, upward, downward, contraction, expansion, locomotion. So, similarly, let me now talk about uh, that from the Baisasika, which is something 500 BC, and there is a Vega Sankar Sanskar 
sutra, Vega means Vega means velocity basically kind of thing you can think of Gati and describe the action of forces particularly the mechanical forces there might be electrical forces. So, Vega Nimitta Visesata Visesat Karmano Jayate means change in motion occur due to applied force. If you look at what is this can anybody tell me Newton's second law, but is it being taught to us? No, no. Nah. Newton has told and this is 500 BC, right. So, Vega Nimitta Pekhyat Karmano Jayate Niyad Dik Kriya Pravandan Hetu. That means, change in motion is directly proportional to the applied force and is in direction of applied force, right. So, it is more clear now that is the second law. And Vega Sanyoga Visesa Virodhi action and reaction are equal and opposite in direction, that is your third law of motion. And Karanat Abhavat Karya Abhava is there is a little uh, problem, there can be no cause without effect, right? That means we something will be there to have effect. But there is another thing, Natu Karya Abhavat Karana Abhavat. That means, it cannot be stated that there is no cause even if there is no effect, right. He is saying that, but again he is qualifying what should be, you know. So, what I am saying like we need to study these things, I mean these as uh, bits and pieces, one has to re-look at and do look at from the perspective of what they were having. We are looking at from the perspective or the eyes of the western, the way you look. We need to look at both eyes, it will be good, so that you know we can get the better perspective than what our, our ancestors were having also, right. So, this portion that is uh, what you call force and other things what we have discussed is from the Vaisesika, but the five kinds of motion we have taken from Tarka Sangra chapter 1 and then uh, Anambhat. So, similarly elasticity, I will not uh, uh, discuss about the sloka recite. Uh, which is little uh, complex you may not get also. Of course, some of you may be knowing Sanskrit well, ye uh, ghana nibida is goes on that elasticity is the property of a body that all of, all of us experience you know like and also we have studied in our you know school and colleges. It can be seared by deforming forces can get back to its original state and this is uh, Naya Kandali by Sridhar Acharya in 991C. So, if you look at we are having something. So, uh, similarly magnetism or the matter like they call Brahmaka, Chumbaka, Chaiva, Karsana, Dravakam, Tatha, it goes on. So, five types of magnets were there in ancient India, Brahmakam, Chumbakam, Karsakam, Dravakam, Romakantam. So, these are the varieties they have to talked about and they are single phase, double phase, four phase, five phase, multi phase and each is again three colors, it can be yellow, black or red kind of thing. If you multiply all these things, there will be several varieties of magnet, you know they were aware. So, uh, if you look at like we have now discussed about uh, basically what are the basic principles of the uh, methodology, how we can carry out the science or any uh, scientific knowledge we can harness. Beside this we have looked at the what are the mathematics little bit you know glimpses I have given and now we are discussing about physics part portion and I will stop over here and then we will be discussing the next lecture some portion of the physics and then chemistry and then some other things and then we will go on seeing even looking at games, what kind of games uh, our ancestors had devised. So, we will do that in next lecture. Thank you very much.